questions because they don't want you challenging their paradigm. If you come forward with your ideas and what you know and the things we're talking about here this weekend, you've just violated their world and their sanctity. And that is something that they just won't tolerate and will create a very difficult life for you. I got this on the internet. I don't know who to attribute it to. It's one of the most brilliant things I've ever seen. You know, the world according to Americans, America, we're number one, we're number one. Eastern and Western Europe is, you know, pussies and communists. Coffee comes from South America. We only know Australia's kangaroos. <laughs> you know, the polar cap's cold. Santa, you know. This is really how most America sees things, and I'd love to give credit to wherever it came from, but it came through anonymously. You know, evildoers, bombs go here. You know, Mexico and South America, they do our laundry and lawns. You know? You know, and this is what we're dealing with, and you've got to remember, and you've got to respect, this is their world too. Okay, so your tools are, remember it's all about perspectives, and while this looks like a nice little design, this is actually elephant skin. And so your tools are to show people that it's not what it seems, there's something deeper underneath it. And so your approach is the new three R's, which is not reading, writing, and arithmetic. And this is something I work with people with great depth with, and this is important. You have to make yourself relevant. You know, if you're just sitting there on your, your commune and you're just, you know, working with your own little sphere, it's not going to work. You have to come into today's world if you really want to be a change maker. And you have to do things within today's 21st century and make yourself relevant to today's culture and society. You got to be realistic. You got to look at what you're working with for the second R. You have got to not just say, well, you know, the aliens are going to be here on Sunday or I'm channeling them and you want to come hear them. You've got to be realistic with who you're working with and what you're dealing with. And you need to speak to them in those appropriate terms. But most importantly, my friends, you've got to be relatable. You have got to be able to be somebody but they're willing to look at and to listen to and not be necessarily bringing your stuff on them, but you're entering into their world. 2,000 years ago, you had a great teacher here, and though a lot of the teachings that were really relevant were lost, one of the things I will share with you, which you can dismiss or accept, is that there was a group that he worked with. And in this group, he taught them the ways of the common ordinary man. He taught them about their behaviors, and he taught them how to go forward, not just in this lifetime, but in their future lifetimes, as effective messengers. Messengers who will open the door, messengers of change. And in doing that, you have to be relatable. As you read your old time readings, you will read about the ancient Essenes, how they would change their robes when they went into town so they matched what the people were wearing. So these three R's are things I want you to remember. And so, you know, the change that is happening, as I heard you all talking about it before, it's true. Enough with all the spiritual mumbo jumbo, pal. What I'm seeking is real interchange, said the piggy bank to the guru. The change is us. When we change, everything changes. And it starts within us, each and every one of us, and it has a great cascading effect. Now, I've got to say this before I finish up. The other part of metamorphosis is financial. And that you have to realize that we're no longer these spiritual monks walking along with an arms bowl saying, you know, I'll teach you for a dinner that we have a lot of hang-ups about money and finances. I mean, you know, it's particularly apt now because of the state of the world. And what we have to realize is that this is how we flex our collective arm on this planet, through financial maneuverings and money. It's not money that's bad, it's getting hung up on money. It's the key of loving money, of wanting, you know, amassing millions and billions and living for a 401k instead of quality of life. So you've got to get over this poverty consciousness of, I'm spiritual, I'm good, I'm poor. What is important for us is to be independent, functioning members of society, moving society forward. So it's the love of money, not getting caught up in it, but it is a critical tool for us to become financially aware and not have a hang up if somebody wants to pay you for your services and that you have a right to earn a living. Okay, so it's down to spiritual economics, and what I want to show you is that it's no longer where we just used to be the wizard in the woods is what we were looking for for this magic change. 
is that this is the everyday change.